Hey what's up everybody, Trufinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. CD Projekt Red added 5 new faction leaders to the game and we've been busy taking a closer look at each of them and how to use them effectively. We continue this series with Eldane, the new Squiatel leader. Important note first, all 5 of the new leaders are characters from Thronebreaker, Gwent's single player campaign. This entire video is however spoiler free, so we will not be talking about any story details from Thronebreaker here. If you're interested in Thronebreaker, you can check out my playthrough right here. Everyone still around? Great, here we go. Let's start with Eldane's ability. Eldane can transform a face-up allied trap into a 3 power elven deadeye. And he can do this 4 times over the course of the match. The deadeyes themselves don't do anything particular, so they basically just transform traps into 3 power units. At face value this gives you 12 points, which is actually not bad for a leading ability. He needs a lot of traps though to actually pull this off, so on that front Eldane does not allow for much flexibility in regards to deck composition. For my deck, the cards of which you can check out right here, I decided to go all out on the traps, combining them with a lot of movement abilities. Let's go a bit deeper. The main problem with Eldane is that there are not a lot of trap cards available right now, limiting your options. For now that is, because of course the Crimson Curse expansion later this month will surely improve upon this, but as I said, for now our options are limited. Traps are played face down so your opponent never knows which trap you play. They are triggered on different moments depending on the card. The Incinerating Trap damages the next unit your opponent plays by 5 after their deployabilities are finished, and is a great way to start off the match if you don't have the first play. The Pitfall Trap, on the other hand, straight up destroys the next enemy unit played even before any abilities can trigger, and is perfect to play by the end of the match to counter big finishers. The Crushing Trap triggers automatically after 2 turns, meaning you can play one more card before it triggers. This trap damages all enemies on the most populated row by 2. You can also trigger it manually to damage those units by 1 instead if you feel impatient. The Serpent Trap counters the next special card your opponent plays and is a great defense in general. And last but not least we have the Mahakam Horn, which boosts its adjacent units by 4 each when your opponent passes. A lot of players actually forget this card exists, causing them to pass on rounds they think they've won only to lose because of the 8 extra points it generates on a pass. This sometimes leads to a very easy win because of the massive card advantage you gain like that. Traps count as artifacts and can therefore be countered by artifact destruction cards. Not a lot of players run more than one of these however, so this is usually not a problem. And that's it! That's all the traps in the game so far and that is part of the problem with Eldane. Since there are only a few options, your opponent can anticipate what you have available and play their hand accordingly. To offset this a bit, I fill out the rest of my deck with movement units, allowing me to position enemies where they would be the most affected by my traps. I'm going to twist my tongue a bit, but here goes. The Vrahead Dragoon, Strays of Spala, Melina, Ciaran Ep Iznilin and Nevelin can all move units, either your own or your opponent's. This allows you to place all enemy units on the same row for, for example, a Crushing Trap or Dragon's Dream. Talking about Dragon's Dream, this card puts a row effect on a selected row that damages all units on that row by 3 after 3 turns. If you play Nevelin, who moves all units from one row to the other right before Dragon's Dream triggers, you can deal a devastating blow to your opponent's board, especially at the end of a round. Pretty much no one plays the row clearing effect, so it's hardly ever countered. To further work off the movement, we have the Vryhead Brigade, which damages a random enemy by 2 and does this again each time it is moved. The Dolblatana Sentry can damage each enemy that moves by 1 or boost each moving ally by 1, depending on his position. And finally, Melina can keep this going by allowing you to move a unit every 2 turns. Your other traps work as a defensive shield against any possible counters and should be converted into dead eyes whenever possible. Few cards also benefit directly from traps. The Elven Scout gets boosted by 2 every time one of your traps is triggered and can be a big surprise when combined with the Mahakam Horn. Opponents often miscalculate those extra 2 points even if they expect the horn to happen. Yarp and Ziggurin is one of my favorites in this deck. 
He boosts himself by tree every turn he is alone on your side of the board, so you can surround him with traps while he keeps growing. Last but not least, we have two Yorvet cards. The normal Yorvet card allows you to pull a trap from your side of the field and play it again, or another trap, back to the field. This basically allows you to replay any trap, but this should almost always be the pitfall trap, since it's the most destructive. Yorvet Gambit, on the other hand, allows you to pull up to two random traps from your deck, if you have four in your deck of course, which we have, and play them instantly, filling up the board with hazards really quickly. Both of them are pretty much must-haves in this deck, since they both have amazing control over the amount of traps you can pull. Playing this deck, however, can be a bit tricky. To make the most out of Eldane and his traps, you need to predict your opponent's strategy and moves. If you can guess which cards your opponent will play, you can counter anything they throw at you hard. This means that the more you know about the different types of decks, card combinations and factions, the more you'll be able to predict your opponent's next move and the more you can counter them with the right trap. If you expect that your opponent will play weaker units, such as the first turns against the Thrive Monster deck for example, fill out your board with support units first before playing any traps to avoid wasting them. Keep your stronger traps for the late game, you can always turn them into dead eyes later. The movement units in this deck can counter a lot of row specific units, rendering them completely useless for the remainder of the fight. Remember to not play your traps too quickly, especially if moving units around is more beneficial. As with Arniolf, restraint is again advised. Keeping most of your traps for the last round allows you to not only counter your opponent's endgame, but also gets you the points from Eldane's ability when you need them the most. Use guerrilla tactics, just like Eldane himself, and you can counter even the biggest armies. And that's it for Eldane. If you like Gwen strategies, deck ideas and tournaments, check out myesports.net. They have a lot of tools to share your decks, keep track of active and upcoming events, and they host a number of tournaments as well. The kind folks over there regularly share my videos, so pay them a visit and let them know TrophyNet said hello. I'm really grateful for their support. Got any other tips on how to play Eldane? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below. Next time, we'll discuss how to use the ruthless Nilfgaardian leader, Ardal Ep Dehi. Check me out on Twitter if you want to talk, and if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Maybe even a sub to the channel? Any support is really appreciated. Thank you guys enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye!